Today we're going to be taking a look at the Mac PL series power module or BEC and current sensor for the Cube Autopilot or pretty much any autopilot. Now most flight controllers or autopilots do come with power modules included these days however they are not always the best quality and they are very basic models in general. Now whilst you get the power brick mini with the Cube it isn't designed for some of the more complex applications and this is where some of the power systems for Mac come into place. They are not not only some of the highest quality power units that you can buy but they give you a whole host of features and options as well allowing you to set up very complex power systems on your aircraft or whatever model you're building so what we're going to do in this video is take a look over the power system for with the PL series I'm going to give you an overview show you some of its features and show you how to configure it in Mission Planner as well now if you like what you see on this channel please do subscribe there's a button in the bottom right hand corner please also don't forget to hit that little bell as well which will give you notifications when we release any videos in the future. The PL4-6S is a three output BEC with current and voltage sensing input as well. It's designed to be used with various autopilots such as the Pixhawk 2.1 or the Cube as well as older autopilots like the traditional Pixhawk and others as well. Looking a little closer at the specification it has two 5 volt three amp outputs for supplying power to your autopilot it has one 12 volt three amp output as well it has a single pl sensor input it comes in a cfk enclosure it includes the sensor cables as well as a 12 volt output cable too Looking on the top, you will find the main connections. You have your PL sensor input on the left and then your three voltage outputs along towards the right with your two center being the five volt ones for your autopilot and the far one being the 12 volt BEC. Moving to the bottom, you will find the main power input for the BEC and this is where you would connect it to your main battery power and it is advised to connect it on the other side of the current sensor so any voltage and current that it is using is being measured by the PL sensor as well. Moving around to the back, you can see the open frame of the PCB. Here it does have some little bits of information such as the inputs and outputs labeling, but overall this is where you would mount it to your frame. Moving over to the PL sensor, this is what measures the actual current your system is drawing. Now this is a single wire device and it only measures via the positive connection. Now this needs to be placed between your battery and your main aircraft, so this is the first item to be connected before all your ESEs and your controllers and everything else takes power from the battery. Looking at the spec, the PL sensor comes available in three different versions, a 50 amp, 100 amp and a 200 amp model depending on your application. It is both high and low voltage selectable up to 20S 85 volt and it has an accuracy of measuring current down to plus minus 0.5%. Included with the pack you should get some factory readings where it is actually being calibrated and it also includes autopilot sensor protection as well up to a maximum of 3.3 volt. On the side of the PL sensor you have your little four wire connection which plugs into the BEC to send the current sensing data over. The PL sensor does come pre-wired with about three and a half inches of 12AWG wire on each side. Now you can either add this directly into something like an XT60 or you could unsolder these if you wanted to and then directly connect onto it should you wish. However my advice would actually be connected onto the existing wiring rather than mess with the sensor. Now something to be aware of is you may need to buy some cables separately depending on what autopilot you're going to use. In the standard kit they give you the cables for basic setup but if you're going to use something like a Pixel 2.1 you will need to make sure you do get the correct cable for hooking it up to the power inputs. Okay so just to show you how you would lay this out with a Cube Autopilot what we've got obviously is our PL46S BEC and we've got our PL current sensor. Now on the other stuff they use in the past they have actually done it slightly differently and you actually wired the voltage BEC through the current sensor and then the wiring went from the current sensor to your autopilot. However that is not how this one works and everything is fed through the BEC and that then powers the autopilot. Now because it does have its three independent BEC so you've got your 12 volt for your accessory, you've got your power one and your power two, it means that we can actually use your power one and power two on the cube to give you proper redundant because whilst it is in the same unit they are individual BEC 
ACs built into it. So even if one did fail, the other one would carry on. The only proviso to that is if you were to have a failure on the power input to the BEC and all of the outputs would go down. So wiring this is fairly simple. The first thing we would need to do is plug in the main cable from the autopilot in power one to the BEC. Now, the thing to notice with this one is if you look at the two cables, the ones you'll need, some of them have the sense wires in the middle and some of them don't. So power one should be the ones with the white and yellow cables in the center for your power sensing from your module. So you would simply then go into power one on the autopilot and we're going to put that into power one on the BEC. Then for our redundant power, we're just going to use power two and put that into power two on the BEC. And that is all of the wiring to the autopilot done. Then you would simply connect up the sense cable from the BEC and then plug that into your current sensor. Now, something to be aware of on the current sensors is that these are calibrated and they do have a calibration little leaflet in the packet that comes with them. And you do wanna make sure that you do put that values into Ardra Pilot because that is actually tuned and it will give you the correct current rating for your specific module because their ones are so accurate, they actually do a test at the factory before they ship it and actually check what the actual multiplier reading is to give you your correct readings on your software. Now, if you're not sure which way is in and out on this, it's very simple to check as well. If you flip it over and you look down in the bottom, down by the solder pads, there is some arrows showing you the direction of current travel. So on this, they're traveling that way. So that means your battery would go on that connection there and then your power to your aircraft or your device would go on the output there. Now, to connect this one up, we then simply have our input connection on the side or output, I should say, and we simply plug it in like that. And that is the overall setup for this unit. And as I've said, the nice thing about this setup versus the other setup that they have is that you're not actually passing the BEC through the current sensor to the autopilot. And that means then you've not got that extra layer of redundancy. And because you do have the dual BEC on this, it is going to give you that redundancy through your power one and power two. Now you can use this with other autopilots as well, but the wiring kit I've got here is specifically designed to be used using it with the cube. Now, as I did mention in the last video, you will need to configure the sensor in Mission Planner if you're using Ardra Pilot. Now, you need to take that information that they've put on that little scrap of paper that they include in the box, and you need to then configure that in the battery monitor settings. Now, to do this, you go into Setup, under battery monitor under optional hardware and then under here you need to actually configure it to do it as a voltage and current sensor you then change it to a standard type power module which is other and then in here you would set the voltage divider calculation and the current amper per volt as per the little sheet of paper that they've given you and this then will mean that you will actually get the correct reading in your autopilot software for your current and voltage that you're actually getting and you don't actually need to do any further actual calibrations yourself you can simply put in the pre-calibrated values and you're ready to go. And that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of the new PL sensors. Now, if you go on Mark's website, you will find a whole host of information on the equipment that they make for wiring diagrams, setup diagrams, and recommended configurations, depending on what autopilot you're going to use, and depending on if you're going to use the PL series or the HS series, depending on what your application is. And they have a whole host of different options available for you to be able to use. Now I'm going to be doing some videos on this over the next couple of weeks. I'm actually going to use this sensor in my Cube Orange build with the DJI F550 and I'll show you the progress on that on some of my future videos. Now if you want to get yourself one of these sensors or any of the equipment, whether it be the Cube Autopilot, the Mac sensors, check out 3DXR. They're a big dealer that supply all of the equipment, whether you're making drones, helicopters, boats, they have pretty much everything you need and they support all of the gear from both Pro3 CNC and Hex as well as the Mac systems and all the power modules as well. So if you do want to check it out, there is a link to them in the description of this video and you will be able to get everything you need from them.
that is it for me on this one if you've liked what you've seen please do subscribe to the channel please do hit that bell and make sure you do click it and that gives you all of the updates on any videos that we do release in the future if you'd like to support the channel there are some links in the description as well that's it thank you for watching please do subscribe and i will do another video again soon